arguably one of the most famous snacks. This one's actually kind of good, but that's not gonna stop us. What's that? Just chill in there? August 10th. Okay, so today we are making the one and only Cheez-It. There's all sorts of different iterations, but you know what I'm talking about. Original. Is this something that people are gonna make at home? Probably not. But what was surprising was this is probably one of the easiest, fastest butt betters we've ever done. But we should point out one important thing. If you ever wanted the giant cheese it from the Taco Bell tostada thing that everyone was freaking out about for a little bit, now you can. So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? We're at Target, the three point test. It's Target, but this one's huge though. Appearance wise, I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. Everything else is a two out of 10, it's Target. Five out of 10 for having good shirts. Hey yo, they got a card scalator. Do they not have Cheez-Its? The irony of it having like its own aisle, basically. These are for Kevin. Kevin really likes them extra toasty. All right, let's go. We got the box. There's two here. The extra toasty should just be the original and then just throw this away. The key to opening these boxes, by the way, I'm tired of seeing people just go. This little thing, you gotta keep the tab on. Finger under, in, like opening an envelope. Clean. I'm sorry, but that was solid eight fart in my face. All right, next time you open Cheez-Its, open them and smell immediately, I guarantee you fart. Let's at least define the difference between the two of these. Regular? Okay. Yeah, sorry. Extra toasty? Wait a minute. 15.8% flavor increase, that's it. Less sharp tartness from the cheddar, because they killed it off. Cheez-Its are all right, I like them, I can eat them. In most cases, the time that they're meant to be eaten is when you are either in intoxicated or you're in Southern California, and maybe you have just eaten the wrong gummy bear. None of this is unfamiliar to me, I got the data that I need, so can we make it better? Yes. Look, if we're gonna make a cheese that we're doing it right, it feels wrong to make this without actual proper cheese. Little cheddar, little Emmental, it's a good time. Now you can totally use a large bowl with an electric beater, but I'm using a stand mixer. To the bowl, add a quarter cup or 54 grams of unsalted butter, seven ounces or 200 grams of grated sharp cheddar cheese that's room temperature, and please don't use the pre-shredded sh** because that's a big no kiss. Fold that with one ounce or 28 grams of grated room temp Emmental cheese, two teaspoons or six grams of nutritional yeast, optionally one tablespoon or four grams of cheddar cheese powder, link in the description description for where I get mine, one teaspoon or five grams of fine sea salt, a light pinch of paprika for color. Now just let that mix on medium speed until as smooth and homogenized as possible. Once you have a nice paste, add in three quarters of a cup or 112 grams of all-purpose flour. Let that mix using your spatula to loosen any of the paste from the bottom of the bowl, and once you get a nice crumbly look, you'll then add two to three tablespoons or 28 to 37 grams of ice water, just until you form a nice dough mass. Form that into a thick disc, wrap in plastic wrap, and place in the fridge to chill for one hour. Try to be proactive here and preheat that oven to 375 while you're waiting. Then pull it out, divide it into two even pieces, and one piece at a time, roll the dough into a rough rectangle that's as thin as you can get it, around 1 sixth to 1 eighth of an inch. Now for the easiest part. Cut this as big or as small as you like. My recommendation is to use a five wheel stainless steel cutter like this for pasta, but of course a knife works as well. I made my cuts in such a way that I would get one and a half by one and a half inch squares because I want mine. Big. Now pop those bad boys onto a parchment paper lined baking sheet, repeat with the other piece of dough, then using chopsticks, poke a hole right in the middle of each cracker. Then one baking sheet at a time, bake these bad boys for about 15 minutes or until they are very lightly toasted around the edges and stiff, pull out of the oven, immediately season to taste with salt and cool on a wire rack. Repeat with your other baking sheet and look at that, pal. You know, I was actually pretty shocked with how much these actually look like a Cheez-It, but hopefully ours tastes better, so let's find out. Two Cheez-Its. These look a lot more like Cheez-Its than I anticipated. <laughs> Big dub. Immediately, texture 10x. Not only is the flavor more deep, but the texture has many, 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 many more qualities. This is just kind of crunchy and crumbly. The other one's almost like the mix of a perfect cracker and a nice buttermilk biscuit. It's flaky. This is what they serve at the Ritz Carlton. It's buttery, it's rich. You can taste each layer of, well, the two cheeses, but the Emmental cheese kind of gives a little bit of richness to it. It's not just sharp cheddar. There's like a rich umami cheese in there. And I'm saying, mm -hmm. But you can't say that without a taste test. So in comes Kevin. Bing, 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 bing. Mine is too big. Kevin will be able to tell. Thank God Cheez It now makes big ones. So that should help even the playing field. I'm ready. Open up, buddy. Like a normal person, like you're about to put a Cheez It in your mouth. What would you? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Wow. Number two. I don't know what? if I want number two anymore. I would like number one again, please. 
<laughs> there were only two on the board. Darn. So what's your choice? Number one. Number one was incredible. I love Cheez-Its. This man is a Cheez-It aficionado. Every single day that he comes to work, all he eats is almonds and Cheez-Its. That's it. And the crazy thing is, he's not farting. It's silent. What did you? As someone who loves Cheez-Its, the normal Cheez-It tasted like plywood compared to number one. Your cheese it three dimensional, it was five dimensional, not skip four yeah. dimensions. It was just everything I wanted. I could feel the cheese flavor. It felt like it came straight off of a cheese tree. It really is the difference between a frozen meal and a nicely cooked meal. And I didn't expect something yeah. like that from cheese its I was blown away by them. Incredible review, incredible. Thank you, Kevin. This seems very basic. We shouldn't stop here. We've all seen the tostada circulating on Twitter and everything. We can do better than that. Now, obviously, you can cut these into regular sized Cheez Its, and boom, it's a Cheez It but better, but we're here for the big dog, the tostada. From here, you'll cut the dough into four and a half inch by four and a half inch squares, either with a knife, but ideally a fluted dough cutting wheel. So it's the size of a tostada, but square. Pop those onto a baking sheet, line with parchment, you can fit about three to a sheet, then optionally, you can lightly score the center of each cracker, kind of like you would a pie crust, to prevent it from puffing too much. Repeat with all of your dough, then bake for about 15 minutes or until the edges begin to toast, and the cracker is stiff. Let those cool completely on a wire rack. I just want to show this one piece off. Do not score too long or too deep otherwise you will end up with it splitting like this and <sighs> moment of silence for this cheese it while it's cooling, let's get our Taco Bell beef topping going. Medium-sized sauce pot, set over medium-high. Lightly spray the bottom with oil to prevent sticking. Add in one pound or 450 grams of ground beef, around 70% lean. Press that bad boy down for that full contact sear. For two to three minutes, season to taste with salt. Flip, sear another minute. Then using a hand masher, crush your beef over and over until you get fine crumbles. Continue to cook at medium-high, stirring occasionally. Then once you get some nice crispy bits in that pot, add in half a small white onion, finely chopped, and three cloves of garlic, very finely chopped. Season to taste again with salt. Stir and let that cook just until the onion begins to soften, about two to three minutes. Then add in two tablespoons or 34 grams of tomato paste, stir till distributed, then let that cook for one minute. Then add in one tablespoon or seven grams of smoked paprika, half a teaspoon or two grams of ground cinnamon, one teaspoon or two grams of ground cumin, and one teaspoon or 32 grams of ancho powder. Cook, stirring often for 30 seconds or until very fragrant. Lastly, add in one cup or 240 milliliters of good beef broth, bring to a boil, scrape that fond off the bottom of the pan, reduce the temperature to low, and simmer until all the liquid is gone, about seven to 10 minutes. Now you have what I'd call a filling ideal for a gordita, maybe an enchilada, or in this case, some sort of odd cheese it tostada. Next, jalapeno emulsion crema. Snag yourself five jalapenos, trail those bad boys from edge to edge over an open flame, pop into a bowl, cover with plastic wrap for three to four minutes, then remove from the bowl, wipe off the charred skin with a paper towel, remove their stems, and pop the whole peppers into the blender, seeds and all. I really encourage you to try it with the seeds. The spice gets quite mellowed. Next, add the juice of one lime, seven cloves of garlic, blend on high until extremely smooth. Then while that's continuously blending, stream in three tablespoons or 42 grams of vegetable oil, and once that's emulsified in, creamy, it's done. Now get a separate bowl, add three quarters of a cup or 165 grams of mayonnaise, half a cup or 110 grams of sour cream, all of your jalapeno emulsion, season to taste with salt, whisk to combine, and your creamy green is ready to do naughty things to that tostada. All of your other toppings are pretty basic. Thinly sliced iceberg lettuce, diced avocado, one nice tomato diced as well. Now we assemble. Tostada down, followed by a couple generous spoonfuls of your beef, a light, generous drizzle of your crema. You should also serve a ramekin of this on the side. Trust me. A generous handful of your thinly sliced lettuce, some diced tomato, diced avocado, and look, this part bothers me to absolutely no end. But I'm gonna do it to mimic Taco Bell's weird cold cheese on top. But just for a second, like, why? Cover that up with a few nice leaves of fresh cilantro, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm a big fan of how this turned out. It's sort of like a reimagination of what a tostada should look like, but now we need to see how we did. Here we are with the tostada of the age. Conceptually, I like this. The square I kind of would have liked into a circle, like an actual tostada, but you know, it's a cheese it so. Oh. Pretty good. You know, if this just had a little bit of extra acid and put a little lime juice on this, I would argue that this is a pretty ideal tostada. It makes a lot of sense, right? It's kind of like the cheese wrapping something. We've got that toasted cheese flavor and the crunch from the tostada. And then of course, all the other toppings you would expect. The meat is rich, it's unctuous, it's fatty. We've won. This is gonna be a weird taste test. I'm not really sure how we're gonna do this. So I think someone should just come in, take a bite, tell us what they think. Oh, oh my God, it was incredible. <laughs> That's absolutely amazing. It's got great texture. It's like a mixture between like crumbly and like flaky. Come on, it's a big cheese. it It's that sharp cheddar and Emmental. Thank you. I don't feel like I have to talk about the meat. It's literally beef <laughs> and onions. It's good. Yeah. I feel like this is more about the cheese it than it is about anything else. So we already beat that at the beginning. So we're beating it two times over. The, the horse is dead and then we're like, ah, take that. Cheese it. The horse. Oh, just kidding. The horse is okay. Oh, he's back alive. <laughs> just kidding. It was never the horse that was dead. It was actually Taco Bell. <laughs> I'm gonna get out of here. Oh. Yeah. 
Whoa, there was even like an aftershock. All right, so you heard it here. Big cheese it. There's nothing wrong with it. You can put anything on it and it's gonna be great. I'll tell you one thing, you make this and it's definitely gonna be better than Taco Bell's. You know what else is better than Taco Bell's? B-roll.